Yeah, I'm here at the County of Ventura and I just borrowed $70,000 on these papers here from my dad. And uh, we go to the county to record these documents. I'm gonna tell you why, what happened, what's going on, all that good stuff. Oh, great, thank you. All right, well, they wouldn't actually let me record the process of recording what I recorded at the county to say that I owe my father $70,000. Now, I'll explain kind of how that all works, but uh, first, I know you're probably curious, why, why am I borrowing money from my dad? After all, I'm a real estate broker, 27 is what I do for a living, is I buy and sell real estate, and I help people learn how to buy and sell real estate. Well, let's talk about that. But first. I gotta get some fish. All right, I got fish. All right, so here's the scoop. While I prepare my wasabi and soy sauce because the mixture has to be perfect and I'll show you a trick regarding how to do that even better as well. Let me tell you why I just borrowed $70,000 from daddy. See, in America, culture says that when you borrow money, you need money and that, you know what, you're going broke. Maybe that's true, who knows? What I do know though, is I got wasabi in a bowl and the best way to get this stuff mixed in is you put the wasabi in first, then you put a little bit of soy sauce just to get it moist and then you start mixing it. That way you don't have all those little clumps that end up burning you later. It just becomes nice and perfectly diffused. See, most people just add the soy first and then add the wasabi and that's a big mistake. Maybe we need to start a Meet Kevin report on food. Okay, so here's the scoop. I borrowed $70,000 from my dad. Let me give you the details of the note, then I'll explain why. We can go ahead and break out the foldable whiteboard and say, I am now in debt by an additional $70,000. But because I borrowed $70,000, I also got $70,000 in cash which means technically my net worth moved zero. So I borrowed $70,000 from my dad, but in order to borrow money, people usually wanna be paid money. So in this case, I paid my dad, or am paying my dad, 7% interest only. And this is a five-year loan, so for five years, I pay 7% interest only. Now some of you are really good at math and realize that means I have to pay $4,900 every single year for the privilege of having this $70,000 which I went and deposited at the bank. And you might be wondering, okay, Kevin, why would you pay $408 per month for the privilege of $70,000, what's going on, what happened, why do you all of a sudden need money? Well, that's actually where things get a little bit more interesting. Now, just a quick practical tip. If you want to do this yourself, no, don't worry, you don't need fish. You just need to find a good deal that's going to have equity in it day one. So let's say you only had the money for a three or 5% down payment, and then you wanted to borrow 20, 30, $40,000 to go fix up a property. If you get a good enough deal, there are plenty of people that will lend you some additional money. So that way you put your down payment payment down, you control a really good deal, now you have the cash money to do the fix up, and then your goal becomes, you know, a year, two years down the road or whenever you want, refinance, basically consolidate those two debts. Now you should end up in a place, again, as long as you got a good deal, where even though you may have started putting 3% down and borrowing the fix up, after you remodel it, bring it to a new value, then refinance it, you could basically end up in a position where it's as if you put 20% down on a deal with no mortgage insurance, even though you put 3% down and borrowed the fix up money. That's the key to building wealth in real estate when you have no money at all. You take little money, you find a good deal, and you use the deal to catapult you to a strong position of wealth. Now think about it. You own a house, let's say, or a duplex that has 20% equity, and you find another deal that comes up, guess what you can now do? You can now get a loan against that 20% on that house that you currently have, 
or just do the same thing and get a loan against the place you're buying. The choice is yours. That's exactly the kind of stuff we talk about in the real estate investing course. Check it out down below. Now, before I go into the details of why I borrowed the $70,000, let's quickly understand how it works. I take a one page piece of paper that basically says, I promise to repay you a certain amount of money over a certain period of time and I'll pay you interest. That's called a note. And I sign that note and then my father can file that in a cabinet and he has the right to collect on that note. Now, usually a note has very little meaning unless it's secured by something like a bank ruining your credit score if you don't pay back or a house. And in this case, we secured it against a house. This is about a $1 million property that I own that only has about $600,000 worth of debt. So I took what's known as a deed of trust in California or in other states, it's called a mortgage. And I went down to the county recorder's office and recorded a notarized deed that I notarized. And basically you just fill out a blank template, put in the information, walk on over, pay the recording fee, you get a stamp and you're done. Now, my father has a note that's secured against real estate so that if I ever have to sell that property or ever, ever choose to sell that property, he makes sure that he gets paid before I get any proceeds from that sale. See, so many people think, oh my gosh, why would you own real estate? If you have equity, you know, that money's just sitting there. Well, no, not really. You can use that money to do other things. Usually secondary forms of financing though, they cost you a little bit more money. And a lot of people will say things like, oh my gosh, how could you be paying 7%? That's crazy high, that's so high. It's actually very inexpensive for private money. Most people who are getting private money are paying somewhere between nine to 13%. And on top of that, my goal is to take the 7% and go make 14 to 20% on my money by buying those sweet, sweet wedge deals. So like many people, my dad likes to spend a lot of money. He likes buying new expensive jackets that make him look cool. And he likes buying really fancy equipment for his house or spending money to make everything in his house look just the way he wants it. He's kind of the opposite of me. Problem with that is he's getting ready to retire. In about a year or two, he'll be retired, which is problematic, especially if you haven't saved up a lot of money or invested a lot of money. So my father has been talking about some things that I really don't like. Number one, he's been talking about selling his townhouse, which I think is a terrible idea for him. He loves it. He's over-improved it, it's perfect for him. The last thing he should do is pay the selling costs to sell this property. Then he's been talking about doing something called a reverse mortgage where you basically just tap into the equity of the property and you just live off of that. So I came up with what I thought was a better idea. If my dad lends me $70,000, guess what he cannot do with that $70,000? He can't spend it. Since I don't spend money on stuff that doesn't make money, the $70,000 in my hands are much better off because what am I just gonna go do? I'm gonna go buy wedge deals like I teach you how to do in the real estate investing course. I teach hundreds, thousands of you folks how to buy below market value real estate and make a ton of money with very little money. Links down below for that stuff. But now think about it this way, if my father, now collects $408 per month, that is much better, in my opinion, than having $70,000 sitting in a bank account where he's tempted to spend $2,000, then $2,000, and $2,000, and before you know it, that $70,000 is gone, and you've got nothing left for retirement. But a lot of you savvy folks realize that, well, $408 per month is not enough to live on. So what our goal is, is my father's going to lend me not just $70,000 once, but $70,000 ideally three times before my father retired. This would give him an extra $1,200 in passive income, no fees, no management fees, no whatever, and secured against real estate. So a safe $1,200, to help him in retirement. This will obviously be in addition to things like social security or any kind of 401ks that he invested in or any kind of pensions or whatever. I don't really know, but I do know that this $1,200 is going to make it so that he can stay in that property. And then what am I gonna do with that up to $210,000? 
Well, again, I'm just gonna go shopping for below market value real estate and go make a whole lot more money. And so there you have it. How I borrowed $70,000 from my father, why I borrowed it to fund his retirement, and well, I guess now I have some extra 70 Gs around to go remodel a wedge deal. And after all, it's not that hard to do. To me, it's a big win-win. Follow me on Instagram, and until next time.